Terraria is a game about freedom and choice. It's quite open-ended and lets you figure out things for yourself. This freedom lets you decide what to do to progress, and there are many items that allow you to play in new ways. You can dedicate yourself to one of the four main classes, or maybe try out some more niche playstyles. And if fighting isn't your thing, there are tons of alternatives, such as building, fishing, minigames, and more. With that said, wow, are there some bad items. <laughs> This game has thousands and thousands of different and unique items. When everything is being compared against each other, it becomes painfully obvious that some are worse than the rest. It could be for many reasons. Maybe they're weak weapons that get outclassed immediately, or they're novelty and do literally nothing. These items have zero redeeming qualities, so let's sit back, relax, and get ready to point and laugh at these failures. First up is the Sleepy Octopod. This weapon is available for the three of you that actually bother doing the Old One's Army. It's a melee item dropped by the Ogre, who you may remember from the Impractical Weapons video, as another one of its drops was featured there. Not a good track record, buddy. Ogre during the Old One's Army event, except for one other thing. Editor's note, did I really talk that slowly back then? I am so sorry. The Octopod is pretty unique among melee weapons. You spin the thing around yourself and end with a huge slam. This makes a shockwave that does a decent chunk of damage. When trying this thing out, it did comparable damage to other weapons you get after the mechanical bosses. So it must be good, right? Well, dear viewer, if you're testing this thing on dummies and king slime, that may be the case, but actually using the thing paints a very different picture. There is one main thing this weapon lacks, range. The Sleepy Octopod is so short that it's almost impossible to hit anything without taking one yourself. Flying enemies in particular will give you lots of trouble. This weapon's strong knockback means you can accidentally send these targets further away from you, not only making follow-ups harder, but giving them the advantage. There are even some things you won't be able to hit at all! Worse yet, these powerful shockwaves that make the weapon worth using, they don't work in the air, so you'll be stuck flailing a stick around and not getting much done. You could argue that it does decently well against grounded enemies, and that's what events mostly consist of. Okay, fair enough. I would say this next weapon has fallen from grace, but that would imply that it was good to begin with. The Celebration, not the Mark II, but the original used to be a Moonlord drop. You'd expect it to be a great tool for wiping out an entire screen's worth of enemies, but nope, that wasn't the case. This rocket launcher had awful damage compared to other late game options, its only gimmick being that it could fire two rockets for the price of one. It was so bad, in fact, that when Journey's End came out, Relogic didn't even buff the thing, they replaced it! Even Terraria knows this thing is a pathetic excuse of a weapon. The celebration was moved and can now be obtained from the party girl after killing Gollum. Now that might have been a decent spot for the thing. If it wasn't nerfed. 40 damage. Gone! Just like that. Now the Celebration has a measly base of 25. I think that speaks for itself. But also, maybe it wasn't meant for combat. It provides a pretty light show and it's perfect for, well, celebrating the defeat of the Moon Lord. It may not drop from it these days, but it's still fun to mess around with. No, 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 this thing is useless. Moving on. Have you ever wanted to be a drunk maniac and go on a rampage, throwing ale at everything in sight and generally being a nuisance? What? You're saying that's a waste of a perfectly good mug and you'd rather drink it yourself? Well, pal, keep drinking then. It seems you're not wasted enough to believe that this weapon is any good. The ale tosser is rarely dropped by the tavern keep NPC, so it's a real pain to get. New additions like the flymeal make NPC murder easier than ever, but that doesn't excuse it for being so hard to get. This weapon is only obtainable after the Eater of Worlds or the Brain of Cthulhu have been defeated, and I'd say any other weapon you can get around this time is better. Do you know what the Ale Tosser would have been good against? The two bo- <coughs> One second. The two bosses you need to beat to get it! The splash damage would have come in handy, but no. You find the Ale Tosser too late. Also, like, just use grenades instead? They're thrown just as fast, deal three times the damage, and you don't have to tear your desert apart for ammunition. Oh, and, uh, explosions. Explosions that can hurt you. And the Ale Tosser not only has cheap, albeit tedious to obtain, ammunition, but it does splash damage without risking your own life. 
Uh... This list isn't only about weapons. Nothing gets off the hook here, so let's take a look at some miscellaneous items. The Journey's End update introduced over a thousand items, and new accessory combinations were a huge part of that list. We got the long-awaited Terra Spark Boots, the ultimate defense accessory that is the Frozen Shield, and a true builder's dream, the Hand of Creation. You can't go wrong with most of them. Why then, if I may ask, do these exist? These accessories serve little to no purpose, and I think we should start with the boots. The Fairy Boots are a combination of Spectre and Flower Boots. They grant super fast running, along with minor flight, and have the ability to grow flowers wherever you step. Hellfire Treads also use Spectre, but instead require Flame Waker Boots. They can be fished up from lava crates and create a trail of fire behind you that is purely cosmetic. What's the problem with these items? Well, they aren't components of Terra Spark Boots. By crafting these items, you have permanently shut yourself out of making a much stronger accessory. You'll have to find a new pair of running shoes to correct this mistake. Not worth it in my opinion. Then again, it's not like these boots are terrible or anything. They look cool as hell and still function as Spectre Boots, and you can't go wrong with those. There's, uh, the radio thing! It's dropped by Deerclops, and when equipped, puts this grainy filter on your screen that's supposed to emulate the style of Don't Starve. Problem, this filter melts your eyes. Look, I love what the developers were going for here, but last time I checked, Don't Starve didn't make me want to claw my eyes out. Well, most of the time. The filter makes it hard to see and eventually strains your eyes. It's not only useless, it's painful! If you're playing on the constant seed, which has the filter on by default though, it cancels out the effect instead, saving you from hours of torment. Dang it, there has to be SOMETHING that has zero redeeming qualities! What about, I don't know, every item you get after Moonlord? This includes all of the weapons, yes, the Zenith too. Armor sets, shimmer variants, blocks, vanity, whatever. After Moonlord, there is nothing else to do in the game. You finish progressing and there's no greater challenge you'll face. What's the point of having these items if there's nothing to use them on? Most journeys end with the Moonlord after all. Post-game items might as well be trophies collecting dust on the shelf. But also, that's just not true. It may not be for everyone, but there are some people that love Terraria's endgame. They like being overpowered and going back to revisit old content. Some of these items, like the Portal Gun, the Gravity Globe, Terraformer, and the Drill Mount are also amazing for making interesting maps of your own. Endgame lets you realize your full creative potential, and while it's not for everyone, there will always be those that do. Which isn't the point of the video, I need to stop being so optimistic! Alright, alright, I've got what's probably the worst item in the entire game? The crown jewel of useless weapons. Paper airplanes! For the longest time, I thought these things were fun little toys you were meant to screw around with. Turns out, they deal damage! A whopping four! Every enemy aside from the most basic slime have enough defense to render these things harmless. That is assuming you could even get your hands on some. They are unnecessarily rare and have a 1% drop chance from balloons during windy days. And you'll only get a handful of them. It would be miserable trying to do an entire run with these things. And yet, the fact you can even make a challenge run with them in the first place means that some twisted individual is gonna have fun with them. Really? Even the worst weapon in the entire game has its purpose. We're supposed to be making fun of these items and not finding uses for them. Come on, come on, I've gotta be missing something here. The inner tube is a stupid inflatable ring that lets you float on water, but it's also capable of letting you break the sound barrier to one-shot bosses. Golf? It does nothing for you in progression, but it's a fun way to spend time with friends and joke about how bad everyone is. Aha! Oh. Kites are another thing for multiplayer sessions, and for the collectors out there. Dragging these things along with you won't be killing enemies or getting you rare items, but they are very funny. And the coin gun will be siphoning all of your hard-earned cash to deal mediocre damage, unless you have the really hard-to-obtain platinum coin. But Journey Mode solves that problem. Also, the coin gun lets you do this. The diamond ring costs a fortune and has no effect whatsoever, but it adds a single pixel to your character, so I guess some people would call it fashionable. And the water gun? It shoots a stream of water that hits for zero damage and just makes the target wet. That also means it can give friends using the cute fish run now to speed boost. The beach ball, silly balloon machine, smoke bomb, holy water, specter boots, the frost legion, 
The unicorn on a goddamn stick. Ah! Are there no useless Terraria items? Ugh, what? Ah, so you finally figured it out. You've seen the truth. Yes, I have. All Terraria items have a purpose, no matter how seemingly pointless. I'm proud of you. Come join us then. And here, take the best item of them all. Yeah, on second thought, maybe hell isn't too bad. I think what I'm trying to say here is that there may be some things that are useless, but they're not worthless. There are some items that do jobs better than others, but that doesn't mean these things don't have a reason to exist. There are some things like pets that do nothing in game aside from looking cute. Sure they don't have a use, but they do something, and that could be providing happiness, clout, or anything really. The thousands of building and furniture items may be useless to those that play Terraria for its bosses, but there are others that get enjoyment out of being creative and using these. As long as someone can make use of an item, then it deserves to be in the game. Thank you all for watching the video.